There's literally less than two minutes left. Come on, we need to finish on a fish. I'm not going to pick up on anything unless I'm sure it's on. Go on, go, go, go. Is that on? That looks hung up. It's on. Can't believe that. There we go, we've got him. Well, good morning, everybody. Very different day today. The windows are obviously steaming up, as you can see. We're here at Lindome Lakes today. It's chucking it down with rain. The last time we was here, there was actually ice on the lakes. Uh, but the match, you know, managed to go ahead. Thankfully, Aaron and, and Alex managed to uh, get get the match on. Uh, and Obviously, it's gone milder now, and that's what's brought all this rain. It is forecast to stop about 10 o'clock. So, um, this is a pairs event. So, I'm fishing with... Gaz Dawson again this is round two we're hoping our round one result is the one that we're going to be dropping um, it was a, a rubbish match for us it is a weight competition it's based on weight so you're never really out of it you just need to be drawing where there are some fish so we just had some breakfast I'm gonna head inside now and hopefully not draw one good peg but draw two Gaz has already drawn. He obviously didn't approve of my drawing for him on round one. <laughs> I can't let Gaz go back to that peg again. That's one peg off where he was on the last one. So I'm uh, heading over to uh, Bonsai. <laughs> Local 25. Morning, mate. Local 25 for Gaz. Gaz Dawson. Yeah. yeah. And Bonsai 38 for me. I couldn't let him go back there again. Could I? He'll be all right there today. You reckon? Don't say that. Yeah. You've got some space there. Uh, yeah. It's written down now. You can't change it. You can't swap back. So Gaz is off to Loco 25, which is where you've got your back to um, to Benny's, and I'm on 38, which is only one peg away from where he was on on the first round. But. Alex reckons it's going to be alright there, he reckons there's a bit more room there today, so we'll find out when we get down there. And the other thing as well is I've got the van behind me, so uh, Dad might be able to see me today. Well, as you can imagine, the pegging's so important here, but Alex says there's a bit of room on that peg. I'm going to find out when I get down there, I've got the van behind me. Like I say, this wasn't a great area on the last match, but obviously everything's different, every every week's different. Plenty of water around, as you can imagine, with all the rain we've had, all the rivers are flooded. That's 37, 38, next to the flagpole. That wind's coming straight in, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to get a brolly up. But let me get some winter gear on and uh, I'll get set up. Well, I was attempting to put the brolly up can't be done. So apologies. There's going to be some rain on the lens but it's going to be everywhere. The wind's coming straight into me. Well, virtually straight into me. It's quite a bit of uh, water around behind the peg as well obviously with all the rain we've had this week. So I've got half of my luggage whilst it is uh, EVA. I've got it in here just to save a job when I get home if it's going to be like this all day. But so yeah, so I've just put the brolly away. I did attempt it, but it's coming straight into me, so I don't really want to get wet through before we even start, but there we go. I've got the van behind me anyway, so that's alright for Dad. We can sit and watch a bit today. I don't know if he's gonna have much to watch, but you see how wet it is on here. We've just had so much rain here in England over the last few weeks, and there's, there isn't a river here as such. It just kind of fills up through the uh, through the through the land through the water table, so we just can't run off at the minute. You know, we just had that much. It's come down so quick. But there we go, page 38. I've already soaked some pellets up down there. As you can see, that wind. Well, it's coming from the right and in, but it seems to have turned more, so it's coming more in. If I put the brolly up there to that side, it, it, it's going to block off all that to my right. And if it stays like this, I've got. They've spaced us out nice on here, so I am going to be fishing to that side. So it's going to block off anything if I put a brolly up. But well, you can see it's coming, it's coming straight in virtually. So I'm just going to have to stick it out. Um, I've got three rods set up. I'll talk you through all that in a minute when I've got everything sorted. I've already soaked up some fishery pellets. These are in here. 
this particular batch are quite dark as you can see but it's not affected the fishing you know we've been catching with them now for the last few weeks but they are quite dark in colour so keep them under there out of the rain obviously when I'm sat on my box that'll block a lot of that off anyway um, got a couple of catapults there I've got my hook lens ready three rods there basically the rods are I've got one uh, method feeder I'm just going to wipe the lens one, one 11 foot method feeder and two bomb rods and I'll show you I'll show you uh, the differences between them I'm just going to have three nets in and just rotate fish just, just, you just split your fish on this venue but as you can see I've got a couple of islands there I've got one bank straight in front of me the width there is probably about 16 17 meters i would say something like that but then i've got an island to the right that if it stays like this i can cast to the back of that obviously i can't go over halfway i can go to that left hand point as well if i want to so i've got loads and loads of options and that's what these matches are all about it is bomb and feeder so obviously no pole fishing no float fishing so it'll just be a case of picking a way that I'm going to fish the peg you know I've got loads and loads of options I'm not going to do everything at the outset but uh, yeah I'm going to have a cup of coffee with dad now in the van just get nice and warm and then um, for the next 20 minutes and then I'll, I'll go back to the box and, and just talk you through how I'm going to tackle it so I'm not 100% sure at the moment I'm still thinking thinking uh, thinking about the best way to start Well, we've got a few minutes to the off. All my baits sort, kind of sorted out. I've just got to sort the, the tray out. It's all under cover. Method feeder set up. Um, 11 foot commercial feeder. It's just going to be a kick off with a 15 grammer open star method feeder. Slide that on there. I can change this to a bomb if I wish, but I've got bomb rods set up. With that towards one of the islands out there. That wind's still hacking in. The rain has not eased up yet. So that's the method feeder. Obviously, I could be really mobile with that. And then the bomb set up. I'll show you this now so you've seen it. Um, XRC nine foot bomb rod. And the bomb I've got. This is the same setup on both rods. 10 gram pellet bomb couple of stoppers below and that rod there is the one there is identical to this the only difference is I'm gonna have one with a hair rig on it with a longer hair on it for, uh, for fishing with bread and the other one will uh, have a band on it so that I can fish pellet because I'm gonna be loose feeding six mil pellets somewhere still kind of thinking through how to approach the swim that wind as you can see it's coming straight in so that's gonna affect loose feeding particularly if I go to the right but I'll make a decision on that in a minute. Just gonna get my bait tray sorted. That's it, just a nice three rod set up. Hopefully this forecast is right for this rain to stop around 10 o'clock. So the bait tray, can just move a few things out of the way for you. Got some micro mini mini wafters in there. What else we got? We got some bread if I need it. We got the micro pellets there for the uh, method feeder. Obviously, I can feed them. One of the ways of catching fish on this venue is you can feed. In this competition you can feed uh, balls of pellet by hand if you wish we've got some corn which i'm going to be loose feeding and then i've got some pellets as well but i don't think i'm going to go down the pellet route i think it's going to be more about the corn i think now this time of year and uh, i've got a couple more tins in my bag if i need it two catties got one a lighter one and a heavier one i was going to feed it to my right to be fair so that is virtually straight into that wind. So I'm going to need the stronger catapult. I'm just trying to be as accurate as I can. I'm not going to be able to catapult it too far, otherwise it's going to be really, really, really messy. And that is it. It's got a few hook lengths in there. And then I've got a selection of 20 gram 
into size method feeders there if I want to switch but I think I'm going to start on the method feeder I think but uh, that's going to be the starting point um, possibly to that point probably start just short of that point there I think with a little method feeder just be nice and patient and just see what happens around me loose feed some corn to the right in the middle over here and then that's it that's the starting point obviously I've got a margin here I can tackle later on left hand point there I can go to that point there that island I can go down the back of this island the rules here are halfway to the next angler I've got two islands to have a go at I'm going to start off unclipped just got a drag undone a bit just going to go to that right hand right hand point to that island just short of it obviously I can't go over halfway I've got loads of room here anyway I'm not going to start on the bread I don't want to start on anything too too negative I'm just going to have a couple of casts on on the method just see what see if there's anything there and um, obviously I can switch to the uh, to bomb and bread after that I could dot around with that obviously just dropping the bomb in different areas if we've got to go looking for fish that's it just brightened up a bit as you can see just hoping that rain's going to stop will just give me a chance to just see if there's any fish feeding it around that point of that island or just short and obviously I can have a good uh, good look around and see what how it's fishing it's 15 gram that open method feeder we'll just see what's uh, see what what's feeding if anything is just off the front edge don't want to go into that too shallow water And that's it just going to start loose feeding some corn to the right I'd like to go quite obviously as far away from me as possible down the bank but obviously the um, the wind's going to uh, determine how accurately and how far I can feed that can't really see that many anglers to be fair one on my left can't see anyone on that left hand bank I see anglers down to my right, but I don't really want to be facing that way. So I'm just going to have two or three casts in this spot. Just see if, what kind of reaction we get, if anything. And if I've got to go searching, I will. But I'll, I'll just switch to that bomb and bread. Where I could just dot around with that and go looking for fish. Just hoping this rain's going to, going to stop. This wind's really going to have an effect on loose feeding this corn. Been out there three minutes and um, obviously we've got one or we've hooked one um, just on that little little wafter I've actually made a decision already that I can't I can't feed to the uh, I can't feed corn to the right it's just impossible with that with that wind so I've already changed made a decision I'm gonna feed it to the left because that is, is more downwind and it's much more accurate so that's one thing I've changed already it's a carp as well not an F1 just get that little hook out there we go so we're off the mark it's a good start isn't it so I'll show you where I'm feeding the corn in a minute fish number one on the clicker so I'm obviously going to go back to that same spot again the stamp of the fish that you catch on here is can be absolutely mega you know because you can catch lots of them smaller F1s but obviously if you can pick out the uh, the better carp or the better stamp carp then obviously that's I don't know if there is a way of picking out those better carp I don't know whether well, it's just purely pot luck but so you've got to take what we can haven't we so 
build that up throughout the day. Just in the middle and that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Hopefully I'll keep that area nice and quiet. If I, uh, if I am catching fish, I'll try not to play them obviously over that area if I can help it. And uh, try and keep all the disturbance here. So I've just gone back to that same spot and uh, I didn't get a sign. It, it had been there probably about six or seven minutes. So uh, rather than just sit there, brought it in. I've gone back out, but I've gone a little bit closer to the island. Just a little bit, so I was about a metre off the island. And uh, this has only been there a couple of minutes. Smaller F1, that one. It's a really positive start. Especially with it being so early on. I, mean, I expect some fish coming into the swim at some stage. But to get a couple as early as this, it's really encouraging. To be fair, it's not cold. I mean, it, has, it is obviously a bit mild. It's a good job as well. <laughs> Without wind and rain, otherwise it would be absolutely freezing. That was just a little bit nearer to the island, so obviously I'm going to try and go back there. So yeah, it's an encouraging start, at least we've got a couple of fish. It's brightened up a bit, I want that rain to go away now. I've had two or three indications on this cast. I thought they were liners to be fair, but had a little rattle when it first went in, but we'll go back in again. Still on that same spot. Not getting any warmer, I know that. <laughs> if we're catching fish we'll be alright, so that'll, that'll keep us uh, keep you tends to keep you a bit warmer, doesn't it? When you're moving about and catching. So a couple more casts to that same spot. And if you don't get anything, I'll have a cast to a different spot. Just have a little bit of a search. Ideally, it's obviously nice to have a good start, but you, if you can tick over, it's far better building your weight that way because then you're not just hoping that you're going to get a run later on, you know nice if you can just tick over putting your fish in the net. I'll not be going on that corn line for for uh, at least a couple of hours possibly. I don't really want to be going on that after an hour and hour and a half, two hours. I don't know how long people normally leave that line to be fair because I don't I haven't really been putting that line in. It only tends to come into its own when it starts getting you know really cold. The first outing of the winter for the Oxo so we're off the uh, off the coffee now. We're on the ox. So for those people that ask about those sorts of things, <laughs> with just a dash of uh, a dash of pepper in it as well, that will definitely uh, keep the body temperature up today. Oh, beautiful. Odd little indications there, but nothing's really materialising. So we're just going to drop it back. It's going to come back a little bit, which is going to be in deeper water and those little indications could be liners that fish a little bit further back towards me the first fish we caught the first cast was just down that slope a little bit so I'm just gonna go back to that spot again just that little bit shorter than the last cast well, that rain's finally stopped which is good but we've been fishing now we've been fishing exactly an hour and a half Got me back to your slide like I'm fishing to the right now. What I've actually done is I've actually moved around from this point now, caught two fish there. Then I went to halfway between the islands. Didn't get anything, not didn't get a sign there. I've just gone over to the to this other island now. Around to my right, just the back edge of it. To be honest, if, if it stays up, let's just drop back. I'll drop back again for this time we've connected with something. Got a feeling, yeah. It's a smaller fish. Those other drop backs, I don't know if they were liners or whether they were small fish that have just picked the bait up and I don't know if it's going to be one of them little F ones. Alex Doherty's just been round and uh, he's had a walk round this way. 
he's just said that three or four fish is, is good. So, um, whilst I'm not catching, it sounds like everyone's struggling around that, around that side. <laughs> I'm obviously going to go back to that spot. It does look nice there. Really nice and quiet. First time I've seen catch any number of fish is this lad opposite. Well, it's opposite over to my right. Probably got seen it probably get five fish. Some of them have been small fish. I think he's on a bomb at the moment. Just get some bait in on that corn line. And I've got to make my mind up how I'm going to tackle this right on margin I'll make my mind up in that over the next hour I'm just gonna have a quick look on that spot with the uh, with their, um, just a grain of corn so I'm just gonna try a grain of corn on the hook on this bomb rig just to see if it sorts the fish out or two and if that doesn't work I'm gonna have a a sneaky look on this corn line. Shark drag set. See if we can get this out there first time on the spot. There we go. So I know there's one or two fish out there. Let's so see if we can turn them indications into, into fish. So See if we can pick one up on this, and if not, I'm gonna have a chuck to the left on this loose fed corn line. Oh, it's not getting any warmer, but at least it's stopped raining. I'll just cast that single grain of corn onto that same spot. And uh, to be honest, I didn't I didn't I didn't get anything the first cast. When I, when I picked up the reel in, I had to pull across a small fish. I wanted and that came off. I've just gone back out and uh, just dotting about a single grain of corn but not a big fish but it is fishing hard. It's nice if we can just tick over but I've got the piece of corn back on that one so I'm going back to that same spot. I haven't had a look on that loose fed corn line yet, although I was just thinking about it. And even, I'm not going to sit on that, I don't like that cast. Even the sun's trying to break through now, which is nice. I'll just raise the temperature a little bit for us sitting here. Give that a go. So, decision wise, obviously I'm, uh, I'm still searching out that island, even on the method feed I'll get one or two indications there, so, so there were already fish, one or two fish milling about, obviously we've just caught one, that was number five on the clicker, so I've still got the middle part of that island that I can search to and the far edge of it, if I want to go to the far end of it, I am allowed to cast there. Obviously I can do that with this setup, or as accurate as I can drop back. I don't know if that's foul up or what. But again that drop back. So yeah, just picking out those bits of corn and, and firing, I'm gonna keep firing four or five grains every now and then, just down to my left, a few meters out from the bank. And then I can drop obviously a bomb over the top of it with corn on, or I can drop the method feeder of it on it later on. Number six, I've got two in each now. now. <laughs> All right, so got to go back to that spot again, haven't we? Just a single grain of corn. I've got a size, a size 14 hook on with a band on. It's actually got a band on it because obviously with a band use that to band a pellet or I can use it as I am doing now to pull to pull a piece of corn on gives me a bit a bit of variety I like a small fish rise then 
back of the island. Not quite as close that one, but I'll get a couple of minutes. See if we can pick one up. As you know, that last one it wasn't in long, was it? Oh, that one? That's gone straight round. Well, that's unbelievable. I'm just hoping it's gone round because it's took the bait properly and it's not landed on the back of it. That was rude. <laughs> just shows you, doesn't it? I could have easily just retrieved that and gone back in. This is winter fishing when you're dotting about looking for fish, isn't it? This rod's lovely for this, just a nine foot bomb rod. Really, really nice. Like I said, the maximum sort of cast you're gonna have on pegs like this are usually 16, 18 meters. I'm casting a bit more than that because I'm going to the right, but... There we go. It's my car. Pretty fish, that one. Pinch the grain of corn. Guess where I'm casting back to. So we've got that's seven now. So we've got to try and repeat that, haven't we? Let's get a nice sized piece of corn. See if we can get back there then. We're not going to catch any fish quicker than that, are we? There we go, it's closer that time. That's where I wanted the other cast to go to. Drop back again. And it was on. I thought I'd miss that. How many turns did I get on that? I must have must have had four or five turns on the reel before I actually hooked it. Well, before I felt it. It's a brilliant little spell. quick as well aren't they? Not going to sit and wait too long for them. What's that one? Number eight. One for the middle net. Well I've just had two casts back at that same spot and I didn't get an indication so I've just gone a little bit further to the left. A little bit further to that left hand point of the island. And this has only been there about a minute and a half, two minutes maximum. Feels a better fish this one. Again, just on a single grain of corn. It's been a much better spell, hasn't it? Maybe I spent a little bit too long on the uh, a little bit too long on on the method feeder this morning. Perhaps I don't know. Maybe I should have switched switched sooner to uh, uh, to the bomb, but. We'll never know now, but whatever uh, the decision making was, whether it was right or wrong, we've managed to get to 10 fish now. Well, I've gone ages without that aside. 15 minutes, 10 minutes or so on that loose fed corn line. Never had an indication. Gone back to the main spot where I'd caught on the bomb. Where I had that run of fish. Absolutely nothing. No no signs or anything. So just worked my way down the back of that island. And I haven't had a sign until I got to that far end. So I'll just pick this one up and uh, I've been out there a good five minutes and, uh, and it, it's gone round that's the first fish for ages but that's fish number fish number 14 I was just considering going back to a method feeder I'm just going to have one more cast with this I'm just going to go back to that other side and let's have a rest if I don't get anything on this cast going to um, go back to that same spot that one now but with a method feeder what I have done is I've flicked about 10 pieces of corn 
to the point of that island as well. I left, that was a good 15, 20 minutes ago. So that's another spot. There we go. Like that. Unbelievable. It's just as though they're travelling. They're all in in pockets, fishing, you know, swimming together. Now you get runs of fish when they come in in the swim, and then you might catch one or two, and then they they go out of the swim. I mean, you've seen how quickly that went then. It's just as though you've just dropped it in front of its nose and it took it. So you've just got to take your runs when you get them, if you get them. So obviously I'm, uh, I'll be having another cast on this. Maybe it's just a case of just dotting around when they're there. When they're there, you'll get a bite. And when they're not there, it might not matter whether you've got a method on, a bomb or what. Like an air bomb, I think. That's a golden one, that one. Disgorge your job. Go. That's fish number 15. Oh, look at that. Well, you couldn't write it, could you? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So you've got all that time thinking you're doing things wrong. You're doing things wrong, you're questioning everything. I and mean, you're going up three in three minutes. Let's hope there's a few more there so we can have a long run. F1. Number 16. I have rested that line, that area. So is that why they've come back or they just come back naturally who knows we are now into the last hour and it's gone really really slow now really slow that last period I managed to get to I'm on 18 18 fish but the last two that I've had have been little them little uh, little f1s so I've got a real mixed bag really, I haven't got any really big fish. I've got some of the better stamp fish, but then I have got some of these as well, so. But it's really hard now. It's, um, I'm back out on this right hand swim now, where um, I caught, I had that early run, well that first run on the bomb. I can't get a sign there now. Still got that, that wafter on. I'm just going to have a cast unclipped just to the, the back of the back of the island just see if we can find another pocket of fish I could do this with a bomb obviously but I just want to try it with a method first right then see if we can get gauge this range properly the wind got that it's a little bit short of where I want it to be Gonna give that a, a minute or two. Just push that. Just give it a minute or two. Might just pick one up. <clears throat> that wind's coming. It's off our back sometimes now, so it's uh, the wind. Obviously, obviously, going to be pushing it into that island, which I didn't think about. <laughs> well, I didn't get anything on that first cast. I think it was just a bit too close to the island and not far away. I fished it out, didn't get any signs, so I've just gone back out again. This time it went exactly where I thought I wanted it to go, just allowed for that wind catching it. Just, just down that slope a bit, slightly deeper water. That's been out there a couple of minutes, and a couple of little liners, and then it's obviously gone round. And we've got a fish, which is encouraging. That's fish number 20. A real mixed bag of the sizes today. Oh, so you can get this back to that same spot. It's a bit great to have a run of fish now.
literally less than two minutes left. Come on, we need to finish on a fish. I'm not gonna pick up on anything unless I'm sure it's on. Go on, go, go, go. Is that on? That looks hung up. It's on. Can't believe that. Absolutely. Fantastic. So this could be the fish that we're gonna finish on. Whatever happens, definitely got the strong finish that we that we wanted. It makes such a big difference to your to your day on here, you know, especially when you you might go two hours without a fish. Not much more time to get in to get another one, but let's try. Let's get him, see if we can get him on Oh no, that's it. <laughs> on the death. Finished on a fish. So there we go, we ended up on 27 fish. Obviously, you know, you've seen how, how it finished and that's really what, <laughs> it's what I always need on these matches because you're always gonna have a couple of hours where it's really, really slow. So uh, hopefully we've, um, we're gonna go up a few places on the leaderboard today, but that'll obviously depend on how the other lakes have fished, but I've enjoyed working that out. I've been, I'm really pleased we found some fish over there. Well, I didn't really uh, have a clue what I'd caught weight-wise because I don't click the weight on here. I just click the number of fish and split them between three nets. But they have weighed better than what I thought. They've actually weighed 53 pounds, which is way better. I mean, I lose track on here when I'm catching fish. I don't really pay much attention to the size of them. I just put them in the net and try and get back in and catch another one. So I think 53 pounds is going to be a, a good weight on here today. Uh, hopefully Gareth has caught some as well, so we're going to have a good pair's weight. But been a really interesting match you know I've got to admit the first two hours was uh, a bit of a test I've got to admit it I don't mind fishing through winter but that was a bit challenging but uh, yeah I'm gonna wait while they finished off weighing in and uh, I'll put the results up for you I'm gonna get packed away now get in the van where it's nice and warm and dry have some hot food on the way home with dad mm -hmm. 